Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's get going. Um, so I'm here today to talk about uh, deep learning and graphical models for recommendations. Uh, who am I? So I am uh, Sam Hughes. I'm a senior data scientist at homedepot.com and I work on the core search and recommendations team. Um, I have 15 years experience in software development, seven in data science, um, and I have a PhD from uh, DePaul in Chicago in uh, computer science, specializing in machine learning and artificial intelligence um, in LP. <clears throat> okay, so uh, Home Depot, we tend to uh, work on three types of recommendation problem. Um, the first type of recommendation problem um, I'm going to call alternative or substitute. Um, substitute recommendations are where we want to show uh, your user um, substitutable items for the item they're looking at. They vary in brand preferences or price uh, or color or style, but are essentially the same item functionally um, as what they're looking at. And to explain this, I'm going to use a, a Star Wars analogy. So you can think of substitute recommendations um, kind of like uh, recommending uh, The Force Awakens if you've already seen um, the episode four movie. Um, very, very lots of similarities between The Force Awakens and episode four it has the same plot, the same overall structure, uh, some of the original cast. Um, it, it's more or less the same movie, but it's kind of packaged up in a different package and, and they made some minor tweaks to it. So you can think of alternative recommendations a little like that. It's more of the same um, but we, we're going to show some some sole differences in price and brand and so on. Uh, complementary recommendations are the second type of recommendation that we have on the site. And uh, complementary recommendations you can think of as accessories, items that would go with the product that you're looking at currently or that you are intending to buy. Um, but they're not substitutable. They're not the same type of product, not the same type of item. So again, to use this uh, Star Wars analogy, which I'll kind of beat over the head in the slide. Um, if someone's already watched uh, The Force Awakens, um, then we might want to recommend to them uh, The Last Jedi. It's not it's a very different film, a different director, uh, different goals for that director, different plot structure. Um, but if you've watched The Force Awakens, um, then, then the next thing you would likely buy is uh, The Last Jedi because that follows on in, in the movie sequence um, from it. Similarly, in Home Depot, if someone is uh, looking to buy uh, a dryer, we would recommend to them, um, they would like, like to buy filters. If they're gonna buy a power drill, we would recommend to them um, different drill bits to go with the drill or different battery packs to, to swap out as the battery dies. Um, so a lot of times that comes down to accessories, um, but not always, um, but there are lots of cases where we have complementary items that would typically uh, be used by the person um, needed by the person uh, based on, on the initial uh, purchase. And the last type um, of recommendation uh, is inspirational. So inspirational recommendations are where we try to inspire people to uh, buy things uh, that they, they weren't initially uh, going onto the site to buy. <clears throat> but in their browsing journey on the site, we'll try to recommend inspirational items um, uh, that 
that kind of we think complement you know what they've been doing in the past, but they weren't necessarily there to purchase in the first place. And again, to use this uh, Star Wars analogy, um, if if you've seen some of the other Star Wars movies, we might want to recommend Rogue One. It's not part of the uh, the, the, the any of the trilogies or the uh, regular sort of anthology, but it's very complementary to um, the movies. If you like uh, Star Wars movies, you'll probably want to see see Rogue One. Okay, so that's that's the last uh, mention of Star Wars, I promise. Okay, so um, I'm going to get now into deep learning models for recommendations and try to explain how we uh, used up deep learning models to implement uh, several of those types of recommendations, specifically the uh, complementary recommendations and the substitutable recommendations. <clears throat> so complementary recommendations. So uh, the problem we have here that we're looking to solve is that of um, bundling or collection recommendations. So what we want to do um, is to recommend a collection of items to someone um, when they're, say, remodeling a room or um, working on some kind of home improvement projects where they need to buy a number of items and those items need to sort of complement each other in terms of function and form and style. Um, so uh, to give an example here, if someone is uh, looking to uh, remodel a bathroom um, and when they start browsing um, bath vanity products like sinks and so on, uh, it's also likely that they want to buy a, a bunch of other items that, that go with that uh, bathroom vanity because they're not just replacing the vanity, there might be a good chance that they're actually doing a full remodel, um, particularly on site. So we might want to recommend a mirror, a toilet, a cabinet, a sink, and so on. And it's likely that those items will, will need to complement the bath vanity. We can't just recommend any old sink or any old toilet. They need to look uh, similar. They need to complement it in style um, and finish and so on. They need to look nice together in the collection. Um, so the problem we're trying to solve here is recommending not just a single item, but a collection of items that are coordinated with one another um, and, and go together um, and look nice together. Um, so kind of two aspects we really care about here. One is is uh, is functionality, function, uh, right? So the, we, we need to recommend them items within a bathroom that would go, that would go together as part of a bathroom model. Um, but they also, we also care about form, style, um, and color, and finish. They need to look nice together. Um, so you'll see uh, the examples here, they all sort of match those form and function uh, requirements. There's been related work that's, that's been done on this in other areas such as fashion, um, where people are trying to buy, trying to, uh, buy an outfit, they're not just buying uh, single items of clothing, um, but there hasn't been much work done on this area um, in terms of home improvement. So this, I, so this is uh, really kind of an interesting research area for us and, and quite, quite useful. So our approach here is to uh, generate complementary recommendations that complement color, style, and function. Um, and the recommendations are complementary um, because they come from different categories to the anchor products. The anchor product is really what the user is looking at right now or that we think they are looking to buy. And then we will recommend complementary items that are different and, and they are not the same category um, that that uh, match that product and complement it in some way. But we're going to focus mainly for this problem on outdoor furniture and bathroom products um, because those categories have this collection uh, concept. Um, matching on, on uh, style and, and, and uh, uh, finish is not necessarily as important as certain others, like if you're buying a power drill. Um, then it's more important that, you, that the items are compatible in terms of um, they can be used together. Uh, but style um, is, is less important in those, in those scenarios. So to train, train a model, we need label data. So we're going to use the manually curated collection labels that we have that have been collected by the analysts um, in our system. Um, we have teams of people that uh, manually curate these collections of items um, already, and, and a number of them already exist um, on the site and have been uh, curated in the past. And we're going to take those collections, those groups of items, um, I'm going to take pairs of, those, pairs of items from those collections and treat those as positive labels. So if two items are in the same collection, they get a positive label. 
if you have two items that are in different collections, they would get a negative label. Um, the model we're going to use is multimodal. It combines both visual and textual features. Um, it is a Siamese network, which means um, it has two pairs of the network that are identical. Well, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, and it learns embeddings from titles and descriptions. So it is, uh, has a content-based component that is using the textual data from the product catalog. But together with that, we combine that with, with some simple visual features that uh, match on style and uh, color and font and uh, in finish. Uh, so it's, again, it's a multimodal model. We're combining a text-based Siamese network, uh, content-based recommendation system with a uh, visual recommendation or model. Um, <clears throat> uh, so this is best illustrated on this slide here. So you'll see the collection labels on the left. Um, two, two pairs of items, one to collection, they get a one. Um, and then we will randomly sample uh, pairs of items that are not in a collection and, and give those a, a zero or negative label. In the middle here, you'll see the Siamese network. Um, so a Siamese network is a specific neural network architecture where you have typically two encoders that have the same, uh, that are the same network, they share the same weights um, and they're identical in, in structure. Um, and then you feed two items that are the same type in the bottom of those two networks. And then on top of them, you place um, some kind of similarity or distance function um, and the idea being that you are training these sort of dual encoders to create a vector representation for the inputs that is similar or has a low distance from one another. Um, uh, and if you want to push items that are positive closer to one another and items that are negative further apart in the, um, in, in the similarity space. Um, so the input to these two Siamese uh, uh, towers, if you like, are the title and description from the product catalog. So, that's, uh, so we take the text data, we concatenate together the title and description, and we feed it into the input layer. And then that goes for an, a usual embedding layer and a bidirectional LSTM. And then um, through several layers of the, the bidirectional LSTM, we get a, a vector encoding out output from that uh, side. Again, that's the same for those two items that is the same network. Um, operating on two different items that are either the same or different. And then we have this similarity layer at the top, and that will uh, produce, or be trained to produce a one if those two items are in the same collection, and a zero if those two items are not in the same collection. Um, so in this way, we can train the neural network to take pairs of items that are similar and pairs of items that are different and learn a notion of similarity between those two items um, based on the textual content. <clears throat> the second feature to this network is uh, the color histogram component. So this is a visual component. So we just discussed the content-based component, and now we're going to get to, which is, is really about matching for function. So we, we're going to use the text of the product catalog to determine if two items within the same collection are uh, similar in terms of uh, uh, function. But we also need a component that can match on color and style, and, and this is where the second uh, component comes in in this multimodal uh, structure. Uh, so to get at this, we use color histograms. So color histogram is, is a very simple uh, concept. We take an image and then we bin the RGB values into three buckets, red, green, and blue. And that gives you a histogram for the image. And then you can use that to compare two images to see if they have a similar uh, color palette. <clears throat> We, we do actually do something a little more sophisticated than that, because uh, in these images, we want to subtract the background um, and, and really um, uh, pull out the foreground, because what we're trying to, to match on in our product catalog is, is usually the, the foreground items in the image. Um, so to do that, we use this mean depth of thresholding uh, logic that uh, thresholds an image and extracts only the foreground component. Um, we'll, give, we'll give an example down there about how that works. And um, so we only run the color histograms over the foreground component. Now, the first question you might ask seeing this is why, why we're not using um, some deep neural network here to also match on the images, um, because computer vision algorithms you know, are very, uh, neural networks are very uh, good at that. Um, but we found that using some pre-trained uh, state-of-the-art uh, computer vision uh, models uh, trained on, on data sets like CIFAR uh, and ImageNet, 
actually did very poorly on this task because those, those networks are already trained to predict the uh, class table or the type of items within the image. Um, and they're not really trained on determining whether two items look similar in terms of color. Um, and so we, we found a bunch of matches that have similar types of items, but it didn't match on color. So that's not part of the training objective. Okay, a uh, second example of this type of model that we built uh, for alternative recommendations um, uh, is, is our similarity, similar product embeddings. Um, so we just talked about complementing recommendations, how we, how we recommend complementing items in the collection for one another. The second use case for this type of approach is alternative recommendations, um, which we also call substitutable recommendations where we actually want to recommend more of the same types of item. Um, and this we use uh, to solve the cold start problem. This is a, we use this uh, as a content-based matching approach. And if you, you basically take the content-based uh, Siamese network from the last example and use that to find similar products uh, based on their titles and descriptions. Uh, we use exactly the same Siamese network architecture and, uh, and model and everything, but we train it on a different data set. We train it on uh, pairs of items that are are viewed within a, a session together. And those are our positive labels. So two items are viewed within a session by the same user. We view those as similar or substitutable or good alternatives. And if uh, two items are randomly sampled, um, then we treat those as, as negatives. And so we train the same Siamese network, but to do a different task using a different set of uh, labeled data. And that allows us to uh, match a similar products based on content. And we use this to solve the cold start problem for items where we don't have enough uh, behavioral data to make that judgment um, from user behavior alone. Okay, and I'm kind of running long on the talk now, so I'm gonna wrap that up there. Um, this is all, uh, all this work is, is not, not just my work, but it's work of the whole team. And I actually only did a part of this. Um, so uh, members on, on the team that I work on uh, did a lot of this work and the names are here. We have a paper that we published in Rexis last, uh, last year, last summer, um, that I have a link in, in here. And, um, and you can find out more specifics about the model there. And at that point, I'm going to uh, end this talk and then open out to uh, questions. If people have any questions, um, please go in the chat or um, uh, post them in the chat or the QA, Q and A session. Okay, uh, it says, I hope this is disabled attendee chat. Um, if you want to then post your questions in the Q&A because that does seem to be uh, working. Holly, I'm not sure if you're aware of that, but people are saying that Zoom is disabled attendee chat. So if you have any questions, please post them in the Q&A because um, that does seem to be working. I apologize for the, the chat disabling me. <clears throat> uh, Nikita, go ahead.
Okay, that's uh, 20 minutes. So I'm sorry we had some issues with the chat there, guys. I hope you enjoyed the talk and um, uh, enjoy the rest of the conference.